Hey everyone and welcome back to some more Long War 2. So, let's continue where we left off. I'm going to sell some trooper corpses at the block market, because we need the supplies and the trooper corpses don't seem to be used for anything other than some materials, but every corpse can be used for that. But we need the supplies. We need 125 to start the resistance comms and then we still need some supplies for the proving ground projects. So this should do for now. And we'll get started on the resistance comms right away. Right next to the workshop. And we'll move the engineer. Excavating can wait. It's more important to finish resistance comms. Actually, we could assign one gremlin, I suppose. Instead of having both on the proving ground. We don't need both on the proving ground, really. So you can carry on with excavations. And we'll assign one gremlin to the construction site. Okay, looks good. The alloy plating will still be done in one day. Alright, and... I suppose we could scan encrypted signal. I don't plan doing it just yet. But I'll have to scan it sooner or later anyway. Might as well just do it now. There's the alloy plating. And we got one for free in our inventory. Also, Vincent's fortified training is done. Let's have a look. What can we do next? Let's check Vincent again. What can he get for the next year? Where's Vincent? Down here. Return fire, damn good ground, will to survive. Okay, let's check a few others. So, Christian already had a few perks. Smoker, return fire, shadow strike. Smoker isn't too bad. Let's get Smoker, why the heck not? And that's that. We're also about to finish Patrick's training. So now he's an assault. And we could use another specialist now. It doesn't really matter who's going to be a specialist. They all have free health except Groza. Health isn't that important for a specialist. Well, low health always sucks. But... Other classes have it worse if they have low health. So, let's continue scanning. And, oh yeah. Does the troop transport raid? We will definitely boost it. I'm not doing it at heavy activity. That's much, much better. Alright, let's do it. One of our resistance contacts sent word of an Having said that, light activity is the single area. biggest lie of Long War 2. <laughs> it can be super misleading when it comes to mission difficulty. Anything we can recover from that transport will be a boost to our efforts. Move in and secure the surrounding area. Eliminate all hostile contacts with extreme prejudice. We do have a pretty strong squad here, however, so it shouldn't be too bad. Only one way to find out. So, here's our squad. There's some high ground on the left. We should definitely use that. So, how about we move in this general direction? And we'll set up on the high ground. Especially with Bob. So, let's go, people. The zone wall is behind us, so we're moving in this direction. Let's see if there are any groups nearby. We check the left side, the right side. There. The cactus. Looks clear so far. Alright then. So, Bob to the high ground. And we'll use steady weapon right away. Oh, we have to go like this. We'll That's fine. Anyone else to the high ground? Not Harry, because he's using a shotgun. Not Ambrosine, because she's a shinobi. Maybe Michael for now. I suppose that will do. And let's keep scouting. Still no aliens. Interesting. A little bit suspicious, perhaps? Okay, we found some. Or not. That was just the last move. There is a group in this direction. So we indirectly found some. This might be a little bit too far away. It's definitely too far away for Michael. But we'll leave Bob over here for now. 
and obviously steady weapon. So let's keep moving. Find some aliens. Still none. That group has to be pretty damn close. We are already covered a lot of ground. I'm sure they will show their ugly faces soon enough. No, still nothing. Okay. I don't want to move too far away from the high ground. But yeah. There it is. Okay, looks like that's the biggest pod of the mission. Unless that's two pods on top of each other. That's definitely a possibility. We could actually blow them up from the looks of it. That is very, very tempting. I bet we could do it with Bob. Yes, we could. I think we should do it. And then we can run away with Bill into full cover. It's just way too tempting and I don't want them to move away. So let's go for it. We only hit one, but that's still useful. Didn't have to use explosives for it. I was hoping it will be a slightly bigger explosion than that. So yeah, that is definitely one pod, not two separate pods. Let's move away from them and make them come to us. I think that's the best way to do this. But let's see, can we stay in full cover? Yeah, we can move Bill into full cover. We can move Arsh into full cover. Ambrosin doesn't need cover right now because she is still concealed. Harry is using a scatter ray. We could actually stand over here. No, we'll get flanked if we do that. We can keep him concealed for now. I mean, hunkered down, not concealed. His chance to hit with a shotgun will be very low anyway. So there's no point using overwatch on him. Okay, looks good. And overwatch. Overwatch. Some of them will definitely... Oh, here comes another group. Well, that's a little bit annoying. But we do have some explosives. Wait, they didn't actually see us. Yeah, because Ambrosin saw them and she is still concealed, so they didn't see her. That's good. Having said that, they will definitely engage us on the next turn. That's going to be impossible to avoid. Especially since they can hear us fighting, so yeah. They are on yellow alert at this point. Okay, that's the last alien and we will get a shot. Nice. It's down. So one down. Now, let's be careful not to trigger that other group. Let's start from Bob, shall we? We do have rapid targeting, and holy crap, that's a lot of targets. Yeah, we're not shooting these guys, that's for sure. 50% on the trooper, 48 on the Sidewinder. Well, Sidewinder is the only enemy Overwatch is useless against, at least in this group. So how about... We use rapid targeting on that and try to kill it before our turn is over. We could also use it on the Muton. Yeah, hold on. Muton is in full cover and I would definitely like to kill it. Having said that, we can kill the Muton with combat protocol. We can also break Overwatch and then use combat protocol. So how about we do that? Oh yeah, there are two Sidewinders, so we definitely can't kill them both on this turn. But we will kill the Muton, that's for sure. So get over here. That will do it. And then... I'm not sure what then. We can't move too close, because we will trigger the other group. I can almost reach them with Iron Curtain, but not quite. 
so what the heck do we do? We do have hail of bullets, but I would prefer to not waste it if we don't have to. We can take a shot at the scout and there's a pretty good chance we'll kill him. What about Bob? What can Bob do? 50% on the trooper. I would like to kill the scout, so let's try to kill the scout. And I'm saving rapid targeting for now. Yeah, we missed the scout, unfortunately. We do have the arc pulser on Harry. So that's not a bad idea. Not convinced that's the best move we got here. We do have run and gun up. Harry can't actually do a whole lot that would be useful right now. I guess we can use Arc Pulser on the scout for now. I was hoping to kill him, but there are more dangerous enemies out there. We'll leave him stunned. Now, Ambrosin. Not much point staying concealed, but we need to move out of range of that other pod. Which I don't think is going to happen right now. I would have to move into partial cover. Not too excited about that. She can't even reach these guys on the right side. Let's say we move like this, behind these rocks. She won't be able to reach that group on the right side. So I think it's best to just keep her concealed. Arsh could potentially reach that group, however, there's nowhere to move to. He can move to where Bill is, but not on this turn, obviously. I think it's best if we just overwatch. I think so. We can flashbang them, I guess that's a possibility. The downside is that... No, we can't reach all of them. Can we? No, we can't flashbang all three. Nope. Actually, hold on, yeah, we can. Let's do it then. I think that was the best move. I can't really kill any of them reliably on this turn. So that will do it. That doesn't mean they are not dangerous, but at least they are less dangerous than they were previously. And now I think it's best if we overwatch because that other pod will definitely engage us. So we'll just overwatch. With Michael. We can even reload if we want to, since I don't actually plan moving. Yeah, let's reload. It's just one ammunition, but there's literally no reason not to reload. And that's basically it. I'm keeping Ambrosin concealed for one more turn. Because she can't really do anything useful right now. And here they come, but we knew that's going to happen, that was obvious. And we missed. That was the only shot we'll get to. Okay, yeah, you go do that. Adjust it really well, because you need to hit the next one. Now, these guys are disoriented, but they might still do something. I think Sidewinder just got that stupid poison cloud. Okay, they didn't use it. Alright, can we use our own curtain in a way that actually makes sense? Kind of. Unfortunately, it can miss. So, I'm not convinced it's actually a good idea to use it. Probably not. You know what we need? We need a grenade launcher this time, that's for sure. Probably best if we target the Sidewinders. I'd like to keep Arch in full cover for reasons that are obvious, I hope. So let's use the grenade launcher. He does have supper. So hopefully that means we'll destroy cover. Apparently we did not. No, we did, okay. No, we didn't. That sucks. And that's with Sapper. That's really annoying. You have to take whole separate perk to improve your chances to destroy cover and then you still fail to do it. And that's just a silly log. And we can't even destroy that with a grenade. That's just silly. So what the heck do we do now? 
Well, my plan was to kill one of them with a throwing axe, but that's not going to work anymore. It still might, but it's a lot less likely to work. What about Bob? Might be worth using rapid targeting this time. I would really like to kill the officer, if at all possible. If we hit the officer at least once with someone, we might be able to kill him with hail of bullets. We could throw a grenade at them. Now this will trigger a reaction shot, right? Wasn't there one dude on Overwatch in the back? But let's move in and throw a grenade with Harry. He does have 10 health total. No, there's no Overwatch. Alright, so let's throw a grenade like this. It's unlikely we'll destroy cover, but there is a small possibility. If Arch didn't do it with Supper, this is even less likely to do so. Okay. Now, he's down to 9. Technically, there is a chance that we'll kill him with Hail of Bullets alone. That might do 9 damage. Let's just go for it then. I'm not really counting on it. But who knows? Yeah, we actually did 9 damage. Well done, Michael. So, what now? How many more moves do we have? We got Ambrosine, we got Bob, we got Bill. So, Bill can kill one of the Sidewinders using combat protocol. We might as well do that, I think. They are pretty dangerous, so let's just do that. And then what? What about the Bob? 83% on the Grenadier. Oh yeah, because we are flanking him. 82% chance to crit. Let's check all our options before we decide what to do. I think we should try killing that Grenadier. We got a pretty damn good chance to kill him. Even without a crit, we can do 8 or 9 damage. Let's go for it. Nice. 16 critical damage. Bit of an overkill. Now, we do have the axe. So I would still like to kill at least the gunner. There's no way I'll be using melee on this turn because that would be slightly suicidal. And by slightly, I mean very suicidal. The axe is a free action, so let's just do it. Technically, we could move in to flank him, then throw the axe and then move out. We can also do the same with the Sidewinder. That might be our best option. Thing is, the axe might end up doing 4 damage. It might also graze. But it's probably worth it. They are both about as dangerous as the other one. The gunner can do up to 7 non-critical damage. Same with the Sidewinder. So maybe we should just go for a more guaranteed kill, actually. I don't know, it's hard to tell. If we could kill the Sidewinder, I would prefer that. Okay, let's try to kill it. With the axe. I hope this is going to work. We got almost 50% chance to crit. We got a pretty damn good chance to do 5 damage here, so fingers crossed. Don't graze on me. There. He's down. It was worth it. And now we can move out. So, let's see, back here, as far away as possible, basically. We can't really use full cover without risking getting flanked. Because if I stay here, then, yep, yeah, I'll get flanked, so no. We'll save from Overwatch because we got that perk. Whatever it's called. Shadow Step, that's it. Okay, missed, that's good. Please don't kill anyone, thanks. 
We like to live. Looking good so far. Okay, six damage. That was a nasty shot right there. The trooper cannot reach him. Only one hit so far. And the scout is the last alien, I think. 69%. We got quite lucky there. Yeah, Harry did have a lot of health, but he could have died there easily. I'm glad that he did not. So what now? We need to kill as many of these guys as possible. No more combat protocol, unfortunately. So that's not a thing. We can remove Overwatch if we want to. Probably worth doing, I guess. Alright, let's do it. I quite like this ability because it doesn't end your turn and you can use it from out of range. It's nice. Now, we can either take a shot or we can use aid protocol. I think I'd like to take that shot. It's almost a 50% chance that we'll just kill the trooper, so let's go for it. Yeah, we didn't even hit him. Oh well, you tried. So what now? Harry needs to move. He needs to move into full cover, so I don't know, on the left side probably. He can also just dash away from them, all the way back. What about Bob? Does he have any good shots? He does have three reloads. 70% on the Guardian. That's the best shot we got. Let's just go for it. Come on, Bob. I'm counting on you. Nice. Bob is the MVP of this mission so far. Now, I would also like to pick up the loot, but it's not very safe to do it on this turn. So we will not be doing it. I would like to kill the scout. So let's see. Arch can do it. I hope. All we need is a graze. A graze will kill him. But we got a very low chance to get that done. What about melee? Yeah, this would not be very safe. But we could kill the trooper and then still stay in cover. However, we also risk triggering a new group. So let's not do that. We got a frost bomb, but using a frost bomb against one enemy at two health would be a little bit silly to say the least. We do not have grazing fire on Michael, we got center mass. We could suppress one of these guys, we could also just kill the scout with a grenade. That's not a bad idea. The only problem is that Michael only has a total of 7 health. So I don't like that too much. I'm actually leaning towards killing the gunner with a grenade. So how about we do that instead? There, that will kill him. Yep, let's go for it. I don't think we'll get all three piles of loot, but we can get at least one easily. So that leaves us with Arch, Ambrosine and Harry. What's our chance to stun these guys? 56%. I still prefer to move into safety with Harry, honestly. Unfortunately, if I use the cactus for full cover, I will not be able to use the stun gun, even if I use run and gun, because it's out of range of these guys. But again, I don't want Harry to get killed. Let's just run away. He's down to 5 health. So what about Arch and Ambrosine? It would be great to kill the scout, but yeah, I just don't know if it's going to happen. It's... Definitely not safe to melee any of them. We could flashbang him, which seems a little bit silly. Using flashbang against one single enemy. But he has 85 aim. And he can do up to 6 damage. He is actually really damn dangerous. I'm going. So as much as I dislike the idea of using a flashbang against a single enemy at 2 health, I think it's justified in this case. Not to mention it's not our last flashbang, so it's fine. And I suppose we can try to hit the trooper. 
and we did kill him. Nice job. That was max possible damage with a regular shot. That was amazing. This is going really well for us so far. Okay, looking good. And that guy is disoriented, but he still has 60 aim. Yeah, the skulls are a little bit insane when it comes to chance to hit. 33%. We still got rapid targeting. I guess we could use that. Honestly, I don't really want to. I assume there's one more group. I think there's one more group. All we need is a graze on that scout, and we got so many shots. I can't imagine we won't get at least one graze. There, he's dead already. No need to waste rapid targeting. Now, I still want to pick up the load. As you might imagine. We'll have to give up some of it. Which makes me sad. But it's just not safe to pick up all of it. No way. Unless we can just kill that guy and he's the last enemy. I don't think he's the last enemy. But I'm honestly not sure. Well, we can use Halo Bullets from back here, so how about we... Wait, no, we can't use Halo Bullets. Can we use Rapid Targeting on him? If we move, then yeah, we can. Let's see. We need line of sight to that guy. Can we get it? If we move slightly to the side, then we can. I can't zoom out any more than this. I need to stand a little bit in the open, but he's so far away that he will not be able to target Bob. There's no need to use rapid targeting, we'll just use regular holo target. Save rapid targeting for potential last group. This might be the last enemy. I'm actually not sure. I'm pretty sure there's going to be one more group though. Technically, we could just kill him with melee. I'm just not convinced it's very safe. Certainly not. 53%. That was nice! So are we done or is there one more group? I'm there pretty sure go. there's one more group. Yeah, there is one more group. I knew it. However, we can definitely pick up one pile. There's no need to rush this one. The only question is whether we want to dash towards one of these. It's probably fine to pick up the one closer to us, but if we go for the car. This will almost definitely trigger something. And I'd like to avoid that. Yeah, let's grab this loot and that will be it. The other pile will not expire just yet. We got perception PCS. Okay, that's fine. And we'll pick up this one, but not on this turn. It's still going to be there on the next turn. And the turn after. And I'm giving up the other pile on the right side. We might be able to get this one. We'll see. So let's move a little bit closer, shall we? Got it covered. But we will still use Overwatch. Can we move any closer with Arch? Well, kind of. I don't like standing in the open. Just Overwatch from back here. And... Grab the loot. It's still a little bit risky. Yeah, we are one tile too far away to pick it up with a blue move. That's a little bit disappointing. I don't know. It's risky. Oh, screw it. Let's pick it up. I hope I won't regret that. No, we are fine. Good. All that right, move go. made me a little bit nervous, I'm not gonna Not lie. Alright, people, let's move. Go, go, go. And we got one more pile of loot to pick up. We can do that on the next turn. So Bob, Bob needs to move. He's just too far away at this point. We'll do. As much as I like high ground. It's not very useful if you're halfway across the map. So where is the last group? 
I'm sure we'll find it soon I'm enough. Going. Give me the lot. We got conditioning PCS, nice. That is quite useful. And we just found the group. Right there, holy crap. Okay, that's one nasty group right there. Advent Rocketeer, I do not like the sound of that. So what do we do? Good question. This would be a good moment to use rapid targeting on the Rocketeer. See, this is exactly why I saved rapid targeting. The Rocketeer is a high priority target. And if I used this earlier, it would have been on cooldown right now. Let's try to kill him. Nice one. Yeah, Bobby is the MVP of this mission, like I said before. Now, that doesn't mean we're safe. We are most certainly not safe. We can try the stun gun. The only problem is that Harry is down to 5 health. We also got suppression. I'm not sure about meleeing the Viper. We could give it a shot. We will be in cover from this direction. I don't think the Muton will be able to flank us. Unless it can move into the building and then stand over here and shoot through the window. How much health does Ambrosine have? 9 health. I think it's worth trying. Ah, screw it. Let's give it a shot. We need to kill at least one more enemy. There we go. We got it. There you go. And we got the lot. Alien data cache. Nice. And that's worth a promotion too. What now? We do have... Aid protocol. We could try to stun one of the mutons and then give Harry aid protocol. The problem with mutons is that they can do up to 9 non-critical damage. That's actually kind of insane. We can either suppress or flashbang one or both of them. So the stun gun is definitely worth it. We can actually do it from full cover, so let's try that. And then we can still give Harry a protocol if we want to keep him completely safe. So this will at the very least disarm the Muton. I would prefer to get a stun. He's stunned, nice. And now we can suppress the other one while keeping Michael in full cover. Perfect. The only problem is that we still need to kill them. And I'm not sure if we can actually do that on the next turn. There's not much point moving closer and giving up full cover. Alright, just suppress this one. And then... That leaves us with Bill. I guess we can give Harry a protocol. It's very unlikely the mutant will target him. So we could just make a run for it with Bill to flank the mutant on the next turn. I think it's best to flank the mutant on the next turn. Michael still has full cover. Even if the mutant takes a shot at him, he should be relatively safe. No, he will take a shot at the guy suppressing him. Only 10% chance to hit. So now we need to kill the mutants. Let's see if that's going to happen. We can't melee them, unfortunately. I think we are close enough to freeze one of them. So that's definitely a thing that can happen. Wait, how can we not get line of sight? Really? What? Yeah, apparently we cannot get line of sight to that mutant closer to us. We can flank the other one. So I'll keep that in mind. Let's check all our options. We do have run and gun. It's not entirely safe to use it. One thing we could do is heal up Harry and then use run and gun. I think that's going to be better. Let's try that. 
the shotgun has amazing damage potential, especially with crits. So if Hardy gets lucky, he might actually be able to kill a mutant on his own. That's certainly a possibility. We need one more turn to get Hail of Bullets, that's so unfortunate. Now, where do we go with running gun? Over here, probably, then we can flank either of these mutants. Okay, then. Let's check if we can freeze one of them. That's kind of important for our decision here. Yes, we can freeze this one. Okay, I know what we're going to do then. Run and gun, and we'll try to kill the other mutant. This one will get frozen. Oh, there's actually a turret up there. Seriously? That's just not fair. Alright, well, we do have full cover. That's why I moved like this. 50% chance to crit. If we can kill that mutant with this shot, that would be amazing. Not quite good enough. That armor's tough. If only we had hail of bullets of cooldown. But unfortunately, we do not. We can still suppress the mutant. That's a possibility. And this time, I think I'd like to move closer. Not sure about that. We can still try to kill it with Ambrosine. Can we stay out of range of the turret and then still be able to shoot the mutant? Yeah, we actually can. The only problem is that now we can stand over here. That's fine. Fingers crossed. 60% chance to hit. We didn't even hit him. You had one job. Well, freeze the mutant, that's a no-brainer, that was the plan. So that's what we're doing. And then we'll just suppress the other mutant. Oh yeah, Bob can try to kill him. It's really, really unlikely. But hey, not impossible. Bob could secure his MVP status. And he did it. It's okay, you're still the MVP of this mission for me. And now, suppression of the other mutant. Alright, yeah, that's a no-brainer. I'm not going to risk missing. If he tries to move, we will still get a shot. He will probably just shoot us back. Most likely. And that's a kill, good job. Now, the turret will also take a shot. The heavy turrets are really annoying, they have 80 friggin' aim. Yeah, that was 49% chance to hit through full cover! Alright, now we kill the mutant, hopefully. Only 5 damage, really? Come on, dude. Your shotgun is faulty. <laughs> well, at least this time we actually have hail of bullets, so let's put it to good use. And it's a kill, and now we should be done. Big deal. Status confirmed. All Good job, people. And the area is Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. Fifteen enemies killed, and only one soldier wounded. Having said that, any squad weaker than this would have some major problems with this mission. Oh, and let's check the promotions, because we definitely got some. I can't imagine the aliens are too happy about this one. Can let's see, three promotions. Which is pretty good, because these are mostly higher rank people. Ambrosine, Blademaster, Hunter's Instinct, and Covert. These are all pretty good. I think I prefer Hunter's Instincts. Oh, I can pick it up from this level. Blade Master is always tempting because of the extra aim. Wait, Hunter's Instincts isn't as good as it was. Only plus two damage. So now I'm leaning towards Blade Master instead. 
because it really sucks when melee misses. Let's take Blade Master then. And Michael. Chain shot, formidable and mayhem. Mayhem isn't too bad, but it requires you to, you know, actually hit the target that you are suppressing. So it won't actually trigger that often. And when it does trigger, which is highly situational, it also needs to hit to begin with. I'm actually thinking about formidable, because 6 base health isn't that much at this rank. And there are enemies that can do up to 9 non-critical damage at this point. Let's take formidable. Then we got Arsh, boosted cores. I guess that's a no-brainer when we are specking in grenades. So we got plus 3 aim PCS, plus Psy offense, plus 1 health, a bunch of corpses, 124 supplies, 28 alarium, 27 alloys. Awesome. And a bunch of corpses, that's also the important part. Well done, people. And that's going to be the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.